What's up guys, Bradley Hallman here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's kind of late at night. Um, I just got back home from Louisville. Uh, I'm in between opens. It's uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Most guys are out deer hunting and doing those kinds of things. I've got one last tournament left, one last open, and um, I mathematically have a chance still to reach my end of the year goal, which is to qualify for the Elite Series. It's, it's not gonna be easy. I'm gonna have to have a really good tournament. Um, I've come home and I've gone all in. I'm doing some map research and stuff. Um, I'm gonna take you guys along with me. I'm gonna show you some things that I do. You know, we've talked about Google Earth before. I've shown you some things. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about a few more little tricks in this deal. Um, this is kind of something that I really didn't wanna give up. Um, I've noticed some of the other pros have started talking about it as well. Um, I'm a real visual angler and this is a tool that I've used that's helped me a lot through the years. Um, there's still a lot of pros that won't talk about this and I totally understand why. Um, it's, it's a big, big time tool. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I use for this, the ways that I use it, how it helps me, how I drop waypoints on here. Big thing is I'm gonna show you guys how I transfer my waypoints and pull everything out of Google Earth Pro to a chip, put it in my Garmin unit, load it up, and then I never have to touch anything else. It's seamless. And uh, when I get to Lay Lake uh, next week for the last Bassmaster Open, I will have all of my waypoints and things that I have found on a public fishing forum on my own and load it up on my graph and I'm able to go check some of that out during the uh, pre-fish scouting period to see what's playing and what's not. So uh, you guys hold tight and we'll go through all that. All right guys, so here we are on Google Earth. This is uh, Lay Lake and this is Beeswax Creek. Uh, this is where the tournament goes out of, generally right here. Um, the 2010 Bassmaster Classic was here. This was the classic that uh, Van Dam won in the back of Beeswax. Uh, he never left this area hardly. And uh, Jeff Cree and Todd Faircloth and Russ Lane and I believe maybe even Brent Chapman or somebody else was also in here. They were all stacked in here. And um, they all finished in the top 10, made the last day of the Bassmaster Classic. So for purposes of, of, of using this Google Earth, um, where I'm headed to for my last open with everything on the line, I'll give you guys an idea of kind of how I do some of my map and research. So I think you guys will really enjoy this. The first thing that you want to notice is, is this drop down key right here. This is a, a calendar key, which I've talked about before. We'll go into a little more detail, but it drops down the month and date that the picture was taken. And you can change that by clicking over here. And what makes this important is, let's let's go back to where we started. Let's go back here to where Van Dam won the event. And uh, you can see this creek bed coming in here, and then there's another creek that joins here, along with a big flat here in the middle that has a lot of grass growth on it. And you can see the grass growth, which is actually a lot of the things that I'm looking for a lot going into this event is I want to pay attention to really where a lot of the grass is because we're getting into winter time. It may not be quite as accessible um, visually on top of the water. It probably still is, but um, January, February, it definitely would not be. Um, so, but anyway, so we can click through here and go through different dates to see which pictures are the best for our grass growth see in 20 in February of 15 like I say if you were to have shown up then you wouldn't have even known that that was there and there'll still be subtle pieces of that grass underneath the water even though it's not showing it and uh, I've been through this so I, I kind of already know this is the picture that I want to look at um, this was uh, August of 19 and this is some really good grass growth <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> but for the purposes of this let me cancel this what if you want to click on here is this little pin right here at placement smart and you can drag this anywhere on the map that you wish um, I'm going to place it right here towards the end of this point coming out inside this creek and I'm going to label this grass you can label it grass bed you can label it G which is what I do with a lot of them G for grass but what I'm going to show you is, is how I fly around this map and how I label things um, that I see and then we'll take the same thing we'll take it out to my boat and I will show you guys how I transfer um, stuff from here onto a GPS format that can be used in our units on the boats and then load it to the card and then take it straight to the boat so to help you guys out 
So we're going to drop a waypoint about right here. We'll put this waypoint as uh, takeoff or boat ramp, but we're, we're going to use takeoff because that's where takeoff is going to be for me. So that's a big time deal. Um, if we zoom in here and we really start taking a look at some things, we really want to look in beeswax because uh, beeswax obviously historically has had a lot of fish caught out of it and probably for good reason there's probably lots of tournaments that go out of here and you get a lot of release fish. Here's a lot more grass. I'm going to label this. Like I say, you could be labeling docks, you could be labeling uh, rock piles, natural rock. Um, generally speaking, what I'm looking for whenever I go to these types of places is uh, I'm looking for lower water pictures because I'm looking for underwater rocks, underwater structures and things of that nature. But for this tournament right here in particular, um, it's getting later in the fall or early winter, whatever you want to call it, um, in December. And I really want to focus on trying to catch largemouth for this event because I feel like that is a big player and therefore I want to spend my time in areas that are shallower, flatter, with lots of grass. And uh, it's just, it's kind of a game plan that I want to go into this event with. Now I may get there and have to start all over um, on channel swings or things of that nature if they're further along into their winter pattern and removed from their fall pattern but uh we'll know all that afterwards but uh i want to bring you guys along and kind of show you how i did some of this and like i say you know you can you can zoom in and we can we can change the date on this picture see there's some really good looking that's a really good looking picture you can see all the grass beds you see a bass boat in here so we're going to drop a couple of pins here in both places and just mark grass this is primarily water willow that we're looking at here um, which is a shoreline grass for you guys that don't have it. It's not really a submergent type grass, although this lake has that as well. Uh, coontail, probably some milfoil. I don't know that for sure, but it has had in the past. Um, this is primarily water willow that we're looking at right here, which is one of my very favorite types of water to fish especially in the fall and in the spring. Um, so that's pretty much most of Bees Creek marked the grass in Bees Creek. Now, little subtle deals like this on the point we don't want to miss. We want to make sure that we mark everything because then it makes it very easy in the boat, <clears throat> whether it be a practice day or whether it be a tournament day. Could be me running in on the last 10 minutes of tournament day and I hadn't practiced or looked at any of this and um, I had marked it a week or two prior on Google Earth and flown around so you guys would know. One thing that's important to remember, a lot of these tools and aspects that are built into this system, including this map, can only be used on a desktop. Um, they will not work with a iPad, iPhone, things of that nature. Google Earth works, yes, but you will not have. Um, the dates and be able to change, change the pictures. That's one of the biggest questions that I get all the time. Um, and it's really pretty seamless, guys, moving this for over to my boat, which is uh, one thing that I wanted to show y'all, um, make a pretty cool video of how I transfer all this. Uh, one of the big things that I do in the beginning to start, and uh, if you guys will come over here with me, is that I made a folder over here called Lay Lake, okay? And you can click on Lay Lake and it will close all those files. And if you see the file below it was actually Lake Louisville. Okay, take me back over to Lay. So pretty simple. Um, we've got a few we've got a few things marked here. Um, let's let's go ahead for the for this sake of this video. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna show you guys how to go through it. Um, <clears throat> what I generally do is click on Lay Lake on my folder come down here to where it says save place as okay and I'm going to save this place as Lay Lake I'm going to hit save 
and then I'm going to have to close out here. So I'm not sure how this is going to work in recording, so I'm going to have to double check it. But I'm going to stop this, and then we'll pick it up here in a second. Basically, you've saved it. I pull it up in your do pull it up in my documents. Now this is only if you're using um, a laptop with Windows on it. If you're using an iMac, it's different. You guys that are using Apple, you're on your own. I don't know. You have to check out another another way to do it. But <clears throat> anyway, so you just go back into your documents. Uh, you can actually close Google Earth out. Doesn't matter because you've got it saved at that point. And we saved it as uh, Lay Lake. So I, I used GPS Visualizer. And if you guys will come here and look, you will see choose a file and it'll be right here. Click on choose file, go into documents, uh, Google Earth Waypoints is the folder I keep mine in, and then um, Lay Lake and click open. So the big thing here is, is the uh, format in which you want to keep it because right now it's in KMZ, which is what Google Earth is, and that does me no good. Um, GPX file is the file that I want to convert it to. So I'm going to click convert it. It's going to take me to this page right here. You're going to see this download button. Click download. And then you should be able to come down here and open up your file. So once I get to this file, then I'm just going to take this file and I'm going to slip a uh, 32 gigabyte memory card into my computer here and I'm going to copy it over to it and then we'll go out to my boat and insert it there and I'll show you guys how I do that. All right, I got a mini SD card here inside this little uh, SD card. It's a 32 gigabyte. I'm just going to install it into my laptop and it's going to open up. I'm going to go open that file. Um, I've got a folder in here called Waypoints. Um, I'm going to go into my downloads first. And I'm going to rename this right here, Lay Lake. Um, it'll be Lay Lake. Probably got to be one word, guys. So, And then it's always got to end in .gpx. That's important uh, when you're naming that file for it to be recognized. Whenever you stick it in your garment, it's got to be .gpx. Um, so Lay Lake, one word, .gpx. Uh, that's how I'm going to re rename that. And then I'm going to cut this. You can copy it and I'm going to paste it in my F file, which is on that card. And I've got a folder for waypoints. And see there's already some other lakes in there right now. And it's that simple, lake, uh, laylake.gpx. So pull this out and then we'll take this out to my boat and stick it in the uh, Garmin units and I'll show you how that works. All right, so we got our grass fired up. We are going to insert the SD card, the, the, the mini SD that we uh, took out of the computer. And then it's gonna bring up everything that the card has on it. Okay, so we've put the card in and I'm going to, you got this here that you can see, I think you can see, let me zoom in a little bit there. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. Um, manage user data, uh, copy built-in map and update software. I'm gonna click manage user data. And then you have this little menu that comes up right here. And uh, we wanna merge from card, okay? So then we want to select all files or select a file. We just wanna select one file. This one has a couple lakes on it right now. I just wanna click lay lake. It transferred all of them that quick. Now my graph share, with each other so it's going to be even though i loaded it on this one um, if we go to this if we go to this graph right here and um, we zoom way out um, i should be able to go to alabama even though i'm sitting in oklahoma and go down to lay lake and see some of the waypoints that we just dropped in bees creek right little beeswax so here's beeswax creek and here are the waypoints that we just dropped and they're labeled on my graph grass 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 uh, take off you can see take off here um, as we scroll through this so now when i'm on the water 
I can just easily and quickly just go wherever I need to go. And any, any waypoints that I drop while I'm at the lake will be um, easily to distinguish between the ones that I dropped off of Google Earth. So um, this is a really, really big tool. Um, I'll bring you guys back and show you once again what you're looking at here. Um, as you can kind of scroll and, and, and look, you know, here's, here's some other waypoints that we dropped, grass. Before I pulled you guys in, I'd marked some stuff um, up the river uh, with just G's on them because that's simple enough for me. I, they don't have to be labeled grass for me. If I can just see the waypoint there and a G on it, I know what it is. Like I say, I'll put an R for rock, a D for dock. You kind of get the idea. Whatever, whatever's cheating for you um, to make the system faster. But uh, for Garmin, that's pretty much it. Um, back on this graph over here, you just click back, come back out of this file, and uh, back, 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 and just back all the way out of all of it, and then it will be on that on this graph as well, because my units are tied together. Uh, back over here to the lake, and same thing. So there's all my waypoints that I dropped. All right, all right. guys, like. Some of this stuff, I ain't gonna lie, it's pretty hard to give up. Um, I know there's a lot of YouTube channels out there and you guys can watch whatever you want, but uh, this is uh, this is some pretty pretty juicy stuff right here. I would say that probably, there's a good portion of traveling pros that don't know how to do this kind of stuff right here. Um, it's, a, it's a tool that's helped me a lot through the years. Um, it can help you as well. Uh, Garmin's really easy to navigate through with their menus. Uh, transferring stuff from Google Earth to uh, Garmin, as you can tell, is, is, is very simple and pretty seamless. Um, if, if you're not a computer guy, don't panic. Like, it's not that complicated. I swear it's not. I mean, if you can get into a file and document and you can, and you can hit rename and type in Lake X, you can do this. I mean, it's really that simple. So, um, guys, I really appreciate y'all coming along with me, man. Um, I enjoy sharing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, dude, anytime because I'm dropping stuff like this and, and uh, a lot of other series with my other boys. So uh, you guys bump that like and see you next time. We out of here.